We all want to do God's will, but do we know what God's will is for our lives? Hello and welcome back to Sea Life TV. I'm Daryl Chesser. We're here for another installment of uh, writings that I have posted on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or other places. And uh, I read them here on these videos on Sea Life TV. Today, what we'll be speaking on is God's will. But first, before we get started, I wanted to mention uh, our ministry website, sealifeministries.org. If I, if, if I believe, I'm, I think it's right here. I believe it's right there, sealifeministries.org. And there's a lot of resources there, about seven or 800 sermons from 75 all the way through of my, my church, uh, my mom and dad, my sister, me, and so many guest speakers and resident uh, local speakers. Uh, really a great resource on the media page, the audio archive, and as well as a link to the Sea Life TV archive, which has 110 videos or more of our teaching like this one in, uh, from not just me, but from my, my mom, my sister, and, and others. So go try that out today. So let's turn our attention to God's will. Today, we all want to know God's will, don't we? I know I do, but it seems... It seems like everyone has a different thing for us to do to be in God's will, a different list, a different activity, pay attention to, don't do, do this, blah, 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 blah. But who's right? I mean, seriously, who's right? I believe that God's will is summed up in this one phrase, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. I believe that's God's will. I believe that's the entirety of it. Seriously. God's will is Jesus Christ, crucified, buried, and resurrected. And we are smack in the middle of his good, acceptable, and perfect will when we believe in Jesus' perfect work on the cross of Christ Jesus, his body broken and his blood spilled for us. Let's read a verse here out of uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 through 18. It says, by this, God's will, we have been sanctified, made holy, purified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. But every priest stands daily ministering and repetitively offering the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he has been waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one offering, he, Jesus Christ, has forever perfected those who are sanctified. The Holy Spirit also witnesses to us about this, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and lawless deeds will I remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these sins and lawless deeds, there is no longer an offering for sin. Praise God. Now, I think it's great for you to memorize this passage because the enemies of the cross and dark spiritual forces of this world, they, they will do anything to suppress and distort and destroy this message of Jesus Christ's perfect work for any who will believe. When you put your faith in Christ Jesus and his finished work on the cross, his burial and his resurrection, you are saved made holy and declared righteous by God himself through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. You are forgiven forever. What grace 
What amazing grace from our Father in heaven. Because our sins are forgiven, we can walk out of sickness into health and wholeness, out of debt into all our needs met by his riches, God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus, and out of sin consciousness and into grace consciousness, favor. God's not mad at you anymore. You are forgiven. You are cleansed by nothing you've done, by not your behavior, not even your attitude, but because you said, I need a savior. And I believe what God said about his son, Jesus Christ, that he is the lamb slain. And if we'll put our faith in him, that he came to die for the whole world, that we would be saved. Confess that he is Lord and say, this is it, man. I am born again. All of these things now in this atonement of Jesus' blood and his broken body have set me free. If we are conscious of our sins and not of God's free gift, his grace poured out, his eternal life and his approval of sonship by faith in Christ Jesus, the enemy will try to steal, to kill, and destroy what Christ defeated and obliterated on that cross for us. And and the enemy will try to bring us back into the bondage and sin under law. Jesus died for us. He suffered and died for the sins of the whole world. Because that is why he came. That is why God sent him. God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to be born a human, to have a flesh body, so that he would suffer and die for our flesh bodies. He became human because flesh had to pay for flesh. And his perfect, precious blood for our human blood, our life, our souls, our eternity, for salvation and redemption because of God's free gift of grace, salvation, and righteousness. We are forgiven once, forever, and for all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God really is that good. He really is that good. And Jesus Christ is Lord.